Hello, welcome to IGTV, and this is your look ahead to the coming week starting the 4th of December. Now, markets have had a really good run up in terms of equities uh, in November. But is this all about to change? Well, let's give you a quick snapshot of what we are looking out for in the coming week. On Monday, we've got trade balance figures out of Germany and also factory orders out of the US. And then a little later along uh, the week, we get uh, retail sales uh, numbers out of the UK. The Chai Xin Services PMI out of China uh, might be one that could move the markets if we get a surprise number. Because uh, now that we're coming towards the end of the year and a lot of the earnings have uh, been uh, done and out of the way, uh, many investors out there will be looking for indicators such as the Chai Xin to decide what um, the pivot points and where to for markets in the next uh, few weeks, which uh, will be uh, pretty quiet. We've also got an RBA interest rate decision and more data out of the US, including the JOLTS job openings data. Midweek, keep your eye out for Q3 GDP growth numbers out of Australia. And we also have trade numbers uh, out of the US, along with employment change data too. And the Bank of Canada follows Australia with its interest rate decision. And on Thursday, we've got more trade numbers out of Australia and China and the UK. Uh, the spotlight will be in the property market with the latest Halifax print. And now the Eurozone look out for growth rate numbers along with initial jobless claims data uh, over in the US. Which brings us neatly to the key event of the week, which is uh, those non-farm payrolls. And of course, uh, third quarter GDP growth rate uh, numbers out of Japan as well, although this is the final print. Well, joining us all the way from New York now from Tasty uh, Live, part of IG, is Chris uh, Vecchio. Chris, before we get to that jobs number, let's uh, talk to you about Powell, because we, you spoke about this a great deal this week. And we've had pretty benign comments from other Fed policymakers so far. Uh, what do you expect uh, Powell to do? S toe the line or actually say something quite surprising? Well, the, the line that's being towed from policymakers thus far is actually one that's a little bit of a juxtaposition. And I say that because you've heard from people like Fed Governor Christopher Waller, who suggested that rate cuts could be around the corner. And yet there has also been commentary from individuals like Richmond Fed President Barkin or Fed Governor Michelle Bowman, suggesting that we may need to see rates stay high for longer. And, and that's the perspective that I think Powell could ultimately adhere to, trying to prevent markets from getting too far ahead of themselves. But look, if the rationale from September through the beginning of October was interest rates had risen high enough in the bond market such that the Fed need not raise rates again. It would stand to reason that the 50 basis points, 70 basis points of movement downwards in yields across the US Treasury curve in recent weeks could be enough for the Fed to say, we don't need to cut rates so soon. Fed Chair Powell is speaking at 11 a.m. Eastern today with Spelman College President uh, Helene Gale. I do think these are going to be the important, this is the important event to cap off the week because starting tomorrow, we enter the Fed's communication blackout window, whereby we will not hear any public remarks from Fed officials related to monetary policy up until they release their policy statement and new summary of economic projections on Wednesday, December 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Now, of course, the Fed likes to communicate to the Wall Street Journal. So I would be watching out for a, a timely article from Fed whisperer Nick Timoros in the coming days. Now, the other key thing that uh, investors are watching out for was uh, the oil uh, price given OPEC Plus was meeting. However, it fell uh, as the market seemed unconvinced about the latest round of production cuts by OPEC Plus. Uh, did this surprise you? Were you expecting that? I, I will say it was a little surprising. The OPEC Plus communique was rather muddled. It was vague. And it was lacking the certainty that had been rumored ahead of time. First off, this whole notion of production quota changes. If, if I'm a country that produces 5 million barrels per day, or has the ability, rather, to produce 5 million barrels per day, but in actuality, I only produce one. And then I tell the world that I'm reducing my quota from 5 million down to, say, 4 million. Have I actually cut production? No, not really. It's, it's more of a cut on paper. And that's what we see in the communique from some of these smaller African member states. 
Saudi Arabia was rumored to be extending their production cuts of a million barrels per day through the end of next year. And instead, it's only happening through the first quarter. Now, how much more capacity Saudi Arabia has to cut production is another story. They're actually only producing 200,000 barrels per day more than they were at the depths of the coronavirus pandemic. So production is... Yes, it's a little bit more limited, but not as limited as the market hoped for. And this is occurring at a time when there's clearly flagging demand globally, as there's a slowdown in the Eurozone, there's a slowdown in the United States, very clearly here in the fourth quarter. And China, of course, remains problematic. So oil markets very muddled after a vague and I would say incomplete communication from OPEC+. And we are certainly seeing that, uh, Chris, in the price uh, WTI currently 75 uh, 98 and still in that downward trend there. And of course, next week is also a big one for central banks and also that all important US jobs report on Friday. What are you expecting to hear? Well, between the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of Canada, both of whom are, are meeting next week, it, it's worth noting that the data from both of these countries has been soured recently. We saw a weaker than expected Australian inflation number this week that shows perhaps that they're beginning to import deflation from one of their largest trading partners in China. Yesterday, the Canadian GDP figure was released, due in at 0.2% annualized for the third quarter, and it came in at negative 1.1%. Both of those are perhaps data points that would suggest that neither central bank needs to be hawkish moving forward, and that could be something that ultimately undercuts both of their respective currencies, the Australian and Canadian dollars. The non-farm payrolls report may be the last gasp of good news for the U.S. labor market. There's an alarming statistic that I've come across here in recent days, which is to say that continuing claims in the United States now are up 24 percent over the past year. The data series for continuing claims in the U.S. goes back to 1968. Every single time that continuing claims have been up at least 24 percent year over year, you see that we're on the onset of or in the middle of a recession in the United States. Jobs, losses, and non-firm perils begin to accumulate within the following six months. So right now, the U.S. economy is doing well, but it is slowing down. And I think it's important to note that jobs data could become a little bit more rough around the edges here as we make our way into 2024, which, of course, would be ammunition for the Fed to stop hiking and think about lighting up that first rate cut for March 2024. Thanks very much, uh, Chris. We'll certainly look out for that projection. Uh, Chris Vecchio there from Tasty Live in New York for us. Now, it's going to be quite um, a an interestingly uh, busy week, despite the fact that earnings, the earnings season has quietened down. Now, we've got Ashted out with first half earnings, Ferguson out with first quarter numbers as well. And then further along, uh, we've got uh, Fraser's group, uh, also out with first half numbers, Dollar General uh, be one that would be interesting uh, for investors to digest, given uh, that Dollar Tree and many of the retailers have come out with the anecdotal uh, numbers uh, from Thanksgiving and actually the online uh, retailers, those with big uh, online presence and uh, buy now, pay later services seem to have done well. Fourth quarter numbers from Broadcom also due on Thursday. Then on Friday, look out for first half numbers from Berkeley Group and what it says about the uh, forecast for the next year. Uh, given 2023 has been a pretty challenging year for UK house builders. And that's your latest uh, look ahead uh, for the week starting the 4th of December. For more analysis, do uh, follow me on at Angeline Ong uh, on Twitter. This is IGTV.